This video is created for the Project for Awesome in support of the Berkeley Free Clinic. More on that towards the end. Like many people, I've been disturbed throughout the COVID pandemic by the widespread proliferation of medical misinformation. And as you may have picked up on if you've been watching my videos lately, my general strategy for dealing with all of my societal concerns is to immerse myself in the ridiculous reality TV version of them. Worried about the housing crisis? Watch Extreme Homes. Worried about misogyny? F Boy Island. Worried about anthropogenic climate change? I don't know, Man vs. Wild? So I've been watching Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop Lab, an infotainment reality show spun off from her wellness lifestyle brand that's known for promoting products like Psychic Vampire Repellent Protection Mist and, uh, other stuff at exorbitant prices. The show is six episodes of Goop staff trying out-of-the-box wellness treatments, from cold therapy and freezing water, to expensive anti-aging facial treatments, to psychic mediums communicating with the dead. I'm seeing like a donkey, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say about it. So I started watching after having heard about Goop's wacky pseudoscientific antics for years, and the first few episodes were surprisingly fine. Like, the first episode revolves around the use of psychedelics in a controlled therapy setting, which is actually being studied as a potentially promising mental health treatment. And then there's an episode in which a sex educator helps women work through internalized shame about their bodies. That's pretty good, too. It's definitely a little out there at times. Clouds have a really weird quality but things in here have a normal quality. But those early episodes helped me understand the promise of the show. Goop frames itself as being about expanding access to medical knowledge. What we try to do at Goop is to be open-minded and explore ideas that may seem out there or too scary so that people can have access to the information and make up their own minds. The basic premise is that you have a right to information about your own body and your own health. And that's a powerful premise when we have a healthcare system that's inaccessible to so many people. Navigating the healthcare system can be daunting. In the US, around 30 million people don't have health insurance, with far more underinsured. And healthcare is often extremely expensive. Americans now hold around $140 billion in medical debt. Those costs mean that many people avoid going to the doctor, which means they don't get the care they need or the information they need. For those who can't can see a doctor, in many instances the healthcare system still fails to provide adequate care. Like, women and people of color routinely have their pain dismissed in healthcare settings. I can understand the appeal of the show's stated goal of making healthcare knowledge accessible. And then I got to episode 5, The Energy Experience. I had an exorcism. <sighs> According to the episode, by manipulating invisible energy fields that spread six feet out from people's bodies, you can treat anything from anxiety and depression to migraines, disease, and nerve damage. Outside of the show, the energy healer featured has even claimed that he's cured his patients of breast cancer. So what are these energy fields exactly? Don't worry about it. They're just vibes, you know? The entire universe is made of energy. 4.6% of the universe is considered physical matter. Most physicists would say that the other 96.4% is primarily dark matter and dark energy, but the implication in Goop is that yeah, no, it's vibes. We're 5% matter, 95% vibes. Listen to the science. I do want to acknowledge that this treatment does seem to do something for the people featured in the episode. I believe them that it can be meaningful psychologically or spiritually, but the scientific medical claims are all just vibes. I mean, the science that would be useful here would be clinical trials to test if the treatment is more effective than a placebo, not quantum physics. And look, the Goop team is self-aware that this might all seem a little silly. Could you, like, get any goopier? <laughs> I could not get any goopier. But it's not purely entertainment. It's promoting an expensive healthcare treatment with no evidence that it works. While Goop claims to be about giving you access to knowledge about your own body and your own health, it seems like the knowledge it really wants you to access is whatever knowledge is going to make Goop money. The show often uses economic language in talking about personal health. To me, it's all like laddering up to one thing, which is optimization of self. You've got to maximize. 
you've got to optimize. You optimize yourself by being a consumer, by watching the Goop show and reading the Goop website and buying Goop products. And Goop is motivated to cover eye-catching topics like energy healing to draw attention to the brand. An episode like The Energy Experience might help Goop sell one of the various energy-related products they have on their website, like Body Vibe stickers, which are apparently made of NASA spacesuit material and can help rebalance the energy frequency in your body. To be clear, they're stickers. Goop Lab was released in January 2020, a few months before COVID began to spread in the US. Watching it now, it's hard to separate it from a larger landscape of medical misinformation. Back in 2017, people discovered that many of the same ingredients in Goop products were also being sold by far-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, who today is telling his viewers that COVID vaccines will turn us into mutants. The two have different branding, while Goop sells Sun Potion, Alex Jones sells Wake Up America Immune Support Blend. But the brands have more in common than their ingredients lists. They both present as alternatives to the traditional healthcare system, a system that's struggling now more than ever. This mess of misinformation isn't a meaningful alternative, though. It replicates the worst aspects of our healthcare system, prioritizing profit over adequate care, and it abandons the parts that mostly work like medical research and healthcare workers. Goop presents as an accessible wellness alternative, but it's less a challenge to the problems with healthcare than an exaggerated version of them. The treatment of health not as a fundamental right, but as a hyper-capitalist means of profit. It promises an expansion of medical access, it delivers, expensive treatments that don't work. While Goop doesn't live up to its promise, it points to a real need to make medical knowledge open to all and to fill the gaps left by our healthcare system. At a national level, that means pushing for policies that restructure healthcare to guarantee everyone access to it. In the meantime though, we need something better than Goop to fill those gaps. As I mentioned at the start, I'm making this video for the Project for Awesome, an annual event on YouTube in which people make videos in support of non Nonprofits. This year, I'm supporting the Berkeley Free Clinic, a community healthcare clinic in Berkeley, California. The clinic is based around the belief that healthcare knowledge should be accessible. In all of its work, it aims to provide clients with the information and education necessary for them to make decisions about their own health. Unlike Goop, the clinic aims to have that information be Correct? And also unlike Goop, it offers healthcare services completely unlinked to profit. All services are free, available to anyone regardless of income level or insurance status. Services offered include medical screening, STI treatment, peer counseling, and limited dental care. For services the clinic can't provide itself, it helps clients navigate the healthcare system and local resources to get the care they need. The clinic often serves people who are particularly alienated by our healthcare system. System. It offers resources for undocumented clients and has many trans volunteers with expertise in LGBT sexual health. A 2011 study on free clinics in the US found that when patients were asked what they would do without their clinic, a quarter said that they wouldn't seek care at all, most of them because of the cost. The Berkeley Clinic is providing necessary care, but providing free health care reliant on volunteers is very challenging, especially now during COVID. Now, more than ever, it could use support. Every year, the Project for Awesome gives out grants to organizations voted on by viewers. If you want to help support the work that the clinic does, consider voting for them. Voting will be open for 48 hours starting at noon EST on February 25th. Set a reminder in your phone, maybe? And you can also consider donating to the clinic directly. There's a link in the description. Or if there's a free clinic in your area, maybe look into giving them some support. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to vote for the Berkeley Clinic February 25th. All you need to do is go to the link in the description and click one button.